Well, Ada S. McKinley, you may recognize her name, but what do you really know about her? Well, she devoted her life to helping the poor, but not much has been written about her pioneering social work. As WGN's Tanya Francisco reports, racial bias has a lot to do with it. The early 1900s in Chicago was a difficult time for blacks, especially those migrating from the South. Among them was a woman named Ada Sophia McKinley. Ada was both forward thinking and humble, and she was ahead of her time. McKinley lost three children to diphtheria and had come to Chicago from Texas with her husband to make a fresh start. But what she found were black people suffering with poverty, overcrowding, and very few social services. She saw a need and stood in the gap to fill that need. Jamal Malone is the CEO of Ada S. McKinley Community Services, a service organization known today for its work around education, job training, and child welfare. As the name suggests, it all began with McKinley, who had a passion for helping people. She saw the need to provide services for men that couldn't get services from Hull House or other settlement homes that were geared towards folks that didn't look like her. Unlike Jane Adams, who founded Hull House, McKinley was not rich. In fact, she struggled for years to provide services to those in need. In 1919, McKinley opened the South Side Settlement House at 32nd and Wabash in what's now known as Bronzeville. It was the largest of its kind and fully staffed by blacks. This was around the time of the flu pandemic and the Chicago race riot. Her persistency in terms of helping others, her altruism, volunteerism, serving others, it's truly remarkable. Why hasn't Ada McKinley been written more about? I mean, to me, that's the most shocking part of the whole uh, endeavor. Three years of intense research by assistant professor Kang J. Lee of North Carolina State University and professor Rodney Deezer of the University of Northern Iowa has shed light on McKinley's work and racial biases that have kept her story from being told. Was it easy to find information on Ada Sophia McKinley? Very difficult, very, very difficult. Our history is always written by the power. And whether intentionally or intentionally, the dominant historical narrative tended to marginalize different perspectives. Some of this is done consciously, and some of this is done unconsciously. Professor Deezer calls the cherry picking of historical facts troubling, but not new. I think she just got forgotten because of white privilege. That, that's done by researchers. McKinley started out helping men who were migrating from the South and veterans returning from World War I. She recognized at that time, which is groundbreaking, that through helping men, she was really helping family and helping women. In helping men, she was attacking the root cause of socioeconomic issues that still plague us to this day. The Southside Settlement House was eventually renamed Ada S. McKinley Community House, and in August of 1952, enough money was raised to build a new building on the corner of 34th and Michigan, where it remains to this day the corporate headquarters. Sadly, that evening, McKinley passed away at the age of 84, but her mission has lived on. In fact, it's expanded to over 70 different locations across three states, Illinois, Indiana, and Wisconsin, and now includes early learning educational services, college placement, mental health services, and outpatient clinics. Our programs have evolved and grown, but our core mission and what we were designed to do have not changed. We're still here because the need is still here. Malone and professors Lee and Deezer say it is long overdue for a park, a street or a statue to be erected in McKinley's honor. They say history books and school curricula also need to be rewritten to include her work. And there also needs to be more of an emphasis on research and writing from a diversity perspective. Tanya Francisco, WGN News.